Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video lesson, let us talk about the first major activity of the fundamental test process and that is test planning and control. We'll talk a little bit more elaborately about planning and control activity. So the overview of planning and control is who does planning and control activities in a testing project? The test management. So this is a kind of management activity. When it is done, it is done prior to starting the testing project. So test planning and control are management tasks and they are related to developing the overall test strategy and also monitoring at, at the time of executing the project. We have to monitor, monitor the other word is observe the progress we are making in the project and look at whether we are meeting as per the project test plan or not and if at all we are not meeting we have to take a certain corrective actions during the project. So all these activities we categorize under test planning and control activities and this is a very important activity which has to be done extremely well then only you can do the testing project in a good manner. So how do you do test planning? What way you will start? Test planning is a thinking activity. You have to apply your brains and you have to, when are you doing it? Much before starting the project. So you will be executing a testing project in future and for that you are sitting and thinking about how to approach it, who will do, when they will do, what all risks I may encounter and how do I deal with them and how will I meet my company's testing standards. All these things you will start thinking and the thinking process is called planning process and the quality of thinking will determine the quality of your testing project. The second point is lot of organizations have what we call written test policy if especially if you are working with companies with CMMI level 5 kind of companies they are very process oriented companies they have a testing policy within the company what kind of software they will deliver with what kind of quality they have test policies written so while you are doing test planning exercise if you are working in such organizations, you have to really understand very well what is written in your test policy about how to conduct testing, what kind of end goals you have to achieve after testing for your software quality. So you develop the testing strategy for an individual project based on the guidelines you get from your test policy document. So every large company, they have their own test methods or test processes you have to understand them and in some companies you may not have written test policy then for an individual project you yourself with uh, proper discussions with the clients and other stakeholders you have to evolve the suitable test approach as a part of the planning process if you are working in a smaller company where the company is not guiding you through a overall test policy for that project that you are involved, you must talk to your stakeholders, understand the issues, the risks involved with the software failures and then accordingly you have to select a proper test approach. In either case, you should document the important planning decisions in a, a document and the document is called test plan document. So every testing project will have a document called test plan and these test plans very early in the project you create what we call a master test plan guiding the overall project and as you are doing various test levels unit test you are doing then maybe unit test plan integration test will have integration test plan acceptance test will have acceptance test plan but at the end of planning process one document that you have to write it and that is called test plan and this document the purpose of this document is to communicate to rest of the stakeholders about 
or how you are going to do this project so if you look at it in a plan document or during the planning process what you have to keep in your mind so the first one is you have to think about identifying the goals of this testing project objectives that you have to achieve in this project and the scope what will be tested what will not be tested that is what we call scope you have to determine that and also very importantly the risks for the testing project what all potential negative things that can happen that will hamper the success of this testing project you have to think ahead at the time of planning process put them as risk items and take an appropriate action to control those risks the second one is you have to based on the scope of the project based on your discussions with stakeholders you have to determine the overall test approach you are going to follow there are many test approaches we can follow there are some test approaches we call them as proactive test approaches some test approaches are called as reactive test approach if you are working in an agile kind of project then you may not have all the documentation created and you may not have all the time to do it in a, a very scripted kind of testing you may have to follow exploratory test approach or if you are working for a, a, a some contractual obligation or some uh, compliance regulatory compliance requirements are there then you have to take a much stringent approach like a specification based uh, kind of approaches or risk based approaches you have to take but at the time of planning you will determine the right test approach for your project and the third is identifying and interfacing with the teams involved in development and testing so testing as we told is a not an isolated activity testing happens because there is development happening so when you test you are testing the software that is created by developers when you test you will find defects and these defects will be reported back to your development team and when they change the software to fix the software and release a new build you have to continue your testing so there is a lot of coordination that is needed between the teams development test and some other teams uh, in the client side as well so identifying and interfacing with the teams also you have to think and articulate in your plan document and the fourth item that you have to keep in mind is determine the required test resources based on the scope size of the project and the nature of the testing project you have to think about what number of resources are needed resources is what skills are needed if a, a testing project involves both functional testing as well as performance testing then you need resources who understand how to do functional testing with significant knowledge on the business process of the software and also to perform performance testing because it's a technical activity and you may use tools like load runner or jmeter so people with such skills are needed so determining right and required test resources is the next one and next fifth item that you have to think about is how will i in this testing project implement my organization's test policy if organization test policy is making me to commit to some end objectives so within this test plan how did you take care of that so you have to think about that the sixth item is scheduling test analysis and test design tasks after planning and control the immediate next fundamental test process activity is test analysis and design so you have to determine who will do this analysis and design when will they do so you have to put it in a, a schedule so that is also you have to think at the time of planning and the next item you have to think is scheduling test implementation and execution and evaluation so after analysis and design in your fundamental test process your implementation and execution activity starts and then your evaluation of exit criteria and reporting starts so scheduling again who will do it when will it be done you have to put it in your plan and the eighth item is very important item you have to along with your stakeholders based on the risk situation you have to set the right type of exit criteria or criteria conditionalities based on which i can stop the testing and move the software from this phase to 
next phase. So identifying and determining the exit criteria also has to happen at the time of planning time. So now let us talk about the next set of activities that are related to test control activities. Test planning often is done at the beginning of the project and based on the plan we start executing the project. Now as we execute the project we have to ensure that the project is progressing as per plan. That is where we perform a set of activities that activities are called test control activities. So what do we do as part of test control? First one is making the day to day and critical decisions about the project. So to do that, what we have to do? We have to track the project progress. We have to observe that is what we use monitoring and documenting the progress and test coverage and exit criteria. You have to keep on noticing them. And once you notice them, you have to measure and analyze those results and based on those results, if you are moving ahead as per the plan, you can continue the project. But let's say you are deviating from what you have planned with respect to your coverage, with respect to your progress, with respect to your quality, then what you have to do? You have to understand what is going wrong and the fourth step is initiating corrective actions whenever problems occur. So doing all these activities also very important test management activity and those tasks come under control activities. In fact, again in our test management syllabus, we'll talk about these activities much more elaborately. And before we conclude, let us do a knowledge check on your understanding about planning and control. So the question is exit criteria for stopping testing should be initially established when A after the system is ready for execution, B during test planning activities, C after evaluating the list of remaining defects in the system, D before recommending releasing the system into operational use. So when will you set your exit criteria? Yes, you are right during the planning activities. Okay, so let us check another question. So which of the following is a key test control task? A, initiating corrective actions. B, determining scope. C, implementing the test policy. D, scheduling test implementation. Which is the right answer? Determining the scope is a planning activity. Implementing the test policy is a planning activity. Scheduling test implementation is a planning activity. What is not planning activity? Initiating corrective action whenever things are deviating. So what is the right answer? A is your right answer. So hope you have understood. Again, you listen to the video. If you don't understand or you have any questions, please post them on the discussion forums and learn and have fun.